Hello everyone and welcome back to another Path of Exile video. Today I got a little bit of a different uh, video instead of a uh, build diary because uh, this time around I'm not playing any build that I have uh, come up with myself but I'm playing a Replica Alburn Warpath friend stacking Juggernaut. I managed to farm myself the, the currency to buy the boots and uh, my gear outside of the boots is fairly terrible so that's why i needed to find ways to especially craft the weapon to help me uh solve one of the issues that i'm having which is uh, damage initially and I, i've crafted two swords at the moment and both of them have very similar damage outputs in my opinion so I'm going I'm going to go over the process for both of them. Uh this base right now it's a little bit expensive. Uh the both fractures, fracture strength or fractured attack speed is expensive. But this is one of the ways. The other one it's a little bit more gambly, but more accessible in my opinion, which is uh the awakener or method with the uh elder and shaper sword. So Let's go first over the fractured one. So, uh, the fractured one is safer in my opinion. Uh, it's it's easier to to come up to with with to be in a position where you can just improve upon the craft and 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 then you know have kind of the almost perfect item for you. So the first things first is uh, probably you want a a lock suffix. Because there is, you you will you'll be able to find a lock suffix yourself, doing some of the of the fractured farming. Whereas, lock prefixes will probably mean that you will have to spend the fracturing orb, and that will be an even higher budget method to craft. So, if you want to do like, I don't know, say you you get the base, you get like a tier two or tier three fracture, and then you want to craft the sword, for instance, this sword. I dropped with uh, with the fracture attack speed. It was it was incredibly lucky because this base alone right now is like I don't know. Uh, yeah, like ten divs maybe uh, with the tier one fracture attack speed for a, a river sword because it's the one that's popular with this build. So we'll come to craft of exile to to simulate the process because i myself don't really have uh, the currency right now to do a live crafting so what you will do is uh first of all go for attack speed we click here and we click the fractured mod now strength is probably better because attack speed you can force so let's show you if if we go for strength instead So you get a tier one, you know, whatever all of tier one you get, you have the fracture strength. And it's fairly easy because we're using Crown of Ice, you will go for Essences of Woe. Okay, I think we need we need to uh yellow the item first. Okay, there you go, it's yellow. Now you can use essence of woe. This is a whole. There you go. Okay. And you will spam this until you hit uh, the second prefix that you want, which is added chaos damage. Uh, the local added chaos damage. This might take you, I don't know, 20, 30 essences. There you go. Double T1. Uh, once you hit the added chaos damage, what you will do is a prefixes can only change. And the good thing about this in Craft of Excel is that you have like the cost breakdown already here. So you go for prefixes can only change. Uh, here in this case, we don't have an open suffix, so we have to annul. Uh, we hit the chaos damage, but you know, that's bound to happen sometimes. You will have to go and reroll with the essences again until you have an open suffix. Then, if you annul a um, a suffix, you come here. Then you will veil the orb. 
of hoping you get a veil prefix. If you fail this veil, then you have to unveil. And then because we still have the prefixes cannot be changed, we're going to uh, veil again. Okay, we actually have to. So 50-50 and all. Okay, there you go. If you happen to uh, remove the prefix cannot be changed, you have to recraft it. So it, that may happen. Then you have to go prefixes cannot be changed again. But if you hit the annul, then you can do the veil again. Veil suffix, unlucky. Double damage. And uh, this time we don't have the metacraft, so we have to do it again. Then you annul. Then you veil again. And this time we hit veil prefix. There is a good chance that you will hit added, uh, not added, uh, weapon damage penetrate chaos resistance. Uh, there you go. Penetrates chaos resistance. And these are your prefixes. That's pretty much. Uh, and from here, if you have this weapon as it is, what you can do is just uh, craft the double uh, double damage while focus is what Connor is going for in this build. And yeah, this mod will give you a lot of damage. And by that point, you would have spent uh, 4,000 4, chaos, 4,000 chaos, 4,200 chaos at the exchange rate of almost, uh, I think it's like 160, like 26 divines. So that was a little bit of the expensive side because we missed the veil door. But you know, it will give you, uh, it, it's good to have this here. And here we'll tell you the actual breakdown of, of Chaos. Because we spent three Veiled Orbs. And uh, that was fairly unlucky. But you're looking at uh, maybe doing the Veil once or twice. So, yeah. This is this is a decent estimate of, of how much it will cost. If at this point you still have more currency to go to go with. You will do another Prefixes cannot be changed. So this is how you will actually finish the item. And then you will reforge speed. And you probably want this because without the speed, the, the, the weapon will feel a little bit sluggish. And yeah, whatever you hit here, uh, you might do that once or twice until you get like, uh, you know, tier 3, tier 4, depending on, on... You can do this pretty much infinitely until you hit the speed mode that you want. And then again, you craft uh, double damage. And that's that's the first method. Now, uh, that is that is similar to what I have here, but instead of trying to veil because I don't have the currency, what I did is multi mod, added the uh, crafted chaos penetration and the uh, double damage mod because I have the suffix. But you know, you really want the strength there. But getting the strength, it's it's probably more expensive. And uh, I don't know. I I, I think cra uh, I think fractured of strength is the way to go, not fractured attack speed. So uh, this is the other method. Now you will not have this. What what happens here is if we create an item here, uh, two handed sword. Then we do influence uh, elder or shaper. We're gonna do shaper. And the Awakeners or option, I think it should be here, right? No, there is no option to do the Awakener. So what, what will happen here is you might get lucky or not when you, when you do the Awakening. And you're guaranteed to have the two mods that you awaken together. Which in this case, these are the ones that we want. And you might end up with something like this, right? So we're going to actually import this item to see how I would, I would try to uh, finish this craft. So we have the Endurance Change or Millstone and the more attack damage. In the ideal scenario, you have clean prefixes. And you can do the same method as the other one with the Veil Chaos Orb. In a scenario like this... Uh, probably one of the ways that you can go about it is so here in spending. Uh, I don't know how to add it, but you can already assume that the uh, 
Oh, there, there's a way to do it here. Well, the Awakener's Orb is like two, almost three divines, so uh, you have to factor that into the cost. So what you will do here is uh, get rid of the suffixes first. So the prefixes cannot be changed. And we clean the weapon. And this basically, you have two options here. You you can YOLO a null uh, for a somewhat 33% success rate. Or you can YOLO Veil. Uh, the, 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 the downside of Veiling immediately is that if you fail, then uh, then the item is bricked and you have to start all, all over again. So I think the annul is the safest option. Now, what you will try to do is exactly that. Uh, but, you know, there is... There are some times where you will get rid of, of the wrong mod. And what you will do instead at that point is just do another Awakener setup. And that will add, like, um, almost three Divines to the cost. So assume that you actually hit this, then uh, you will do the same thing as the other. You do prophecies cannot be changed, and then uh, what I would want to do here. No, yeah, the the, the exalt can give you a prefix. What I'll do here is just uh, veil and trying to hit veil prefix. We hit it at the in the first one. And then same thing, Chaos Pen. And now you your weapon is pretty much done at this point. Again, you do process is going to be changed. And here, uh, here it changes a little bit because if we look at the mod pool for uh, 200 weapons in Shaper and Elder suffixes, there are more speed modifiers. And there are, there are a few strong speed modifiers, but there is one that you don't really want, which is movement speed in the case of the Elder. Um, or was it Shaper? Yeah, Shaper. Shaper has movement speed. And it's a uh, decently high weighting when compared to the other modifiers that you can get through speed. So, uh, but still, it's probably still the best option. Now, there is another option in this case, which is to try to get uh, physical damage converted to Chaos. That is gonna give you a little bit extra DPS from the weapon itself, and and it's pretty much guaranteed to hit with uh, with a chaos reforge because there's no other chaos mod, and I'll show you here. We go uh, previous gonna be changed, and we go chaos reforge. Oh, never mind. You can hit chaos resistance too. Yeah, I forgot, like, the base mod pool. So, uh, probably speed is still the, the safest one. If there was attack here, there's attack too. And for attack, you have attack speed board. You can get crit, and crit is almost a brick, and you have to continue crafting. But, you know, if you don't fill the suffixes, you can still do this over and over again. So, for attack, you might hit, like, accuracy. In this case, this is a lucky roll to hit strength. But for speed, uh, you can hit one of the hybrids or just, uh, you know, the tier 1. With this tier 1, it's uh, almost done. Same thing here. Uh, increase attack speed. Attack speed, if you kill recently, is also very nice. But with this one, there is also the, the problem of trying to get the uh, strength on the weapon. Now, you may go about not having it at all. So, you just reforge speed, you take what you get, or instead of doing prefix cannot be changed, you can also multi-mod this, and then go can have, can have up to three, you go double damage, you go double damage, and then you go attack speed. And, you know, attack speed, dex, and int is not a bad craft. It's a little bit less attack speed, but if you're struggling with attributes, which you might be when you're first starting uh, this build on, on a slightly lower budget, then uh, this might be a good option. Again, you can, you can choose not to do this and do as many reforges as, as you want. 
until you hit until you hit like uh the speed modifier that you want and and maybe a a attribute modifier as well you can yolo exalt for instance this is a very good one but say you still want the strength you can try to exalt it uh, a few times you will hit the you will hit resistances but some of them you might actually end up with with the attribute because if you look at the weighting uh attributes uh strength and dex have a little higher weighting than attack speed attack speed is already on the item when you reforge and uh resistances are higher than attributes as well but you know it's 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 the lock of the draw basically so you can you can do this until you hit it or you can settle for uh having this very godly mod do the double damage and just leave it at that anyway uh that's all i wanted to show you in this video now that is the part pertaining to how you will do the craft now um a little bit of the rational that i wanted to to go on so is uh why the river sword above other bases so uh i re i really like to come to the poe wiki when i when i want to craft a weapon and when i i want to decide which base i will use we will use two 200 swords uh this is 200 sword base types and uh you can sort here which is very useful and depending on what you want the most out of your base that's why you, what uh kind of base you will select first of all the reason why is a, a sword is being used is because the sword base is the only one that can have the crafted uh, projectile returns modifier and uh, the reason why is a reverse sword is because it's the highest base attack speed for uh, swords. It's also not too bad in damage when compared to the other bases. You know, there are higher damage bases here, but and most of them has, have lower attack speed or uh, there are the higher crit chance bases. But in this case, uh, this build is a non-crit build. It's using actually precise technique. And that's probably because your suffix says you really want like uh, strength, all attributes in jewelry, and then you want like um, strength in, in, in the belts, strength in the gloves, and the rest is resistances. You're using two unique items and a 200 sword, which limits how you can fix your resistances in your gear. So that's why crit, I don't think crit is, is much of an option. Also, the tree is very. Is very eclectic. You're you're pathing around to be able to fit split personalities. So all in all, you don't really care for a high base crit weapon. So River Sword is the highest attack speed one, and the base damage doesn't matter too much, at least for the Alberon setup, because uh, the physical damage is not adding damage to you at all. All of your damage is coming from the boots, and the boots don't let you deal any damage that is in chaos. That includes physical or elemental. So that's the first reason why it's a Riva Sword. And uh, the reason for the prefixes is the same thing when you think about the boots, which is uh, added physical damage from the regular prefix pool will not do anything. None of the added elemental will do anything either. Uh, plus one level of socketed gems might be a, a decent mod, uh, but all in all, weapons don't uh, attack skills don't really scale that well with skill levels with the exception to that being elemental hit so this mod might give you yeah it still gives something but it doesn't give you as much as the others and uh if you think about it why the essence of woe because we're using crown of ice a uh, crown of ice turns this 123 modifiers and multiplies it by 1.5 so that's 123 times 1.5 it's 184 increased damage actually and it's a global uh increased damage modifier instead of a local modifier to the weapon which would be better but you know in this case it doesn't it doesn't really apply to the added chaos damage and the other is of course added chaos damage because that's the only type of damage that uh, can be done with the with the with the boots and uh that leaves you pretty much with only one other modifier which is uh, there is this one, for instance, added chaos with chaos penetration in the hunter is also a, a decent option to use instead of the 
instead of the Elder Endurance Charger on Millie Stone, in my opinion. And uh, this gives you the option of getting stuff like uh, Fist Conversion to Chaos and uh, Intimidate, but the other mods are, are kind of are kind of bad. And uh, the other one is the is the belt modifier for uh, chaos penetration on the weapon. And I think uh, quality of socketed support gems, if you could get it through veil, which I don't think you can, uh, could be could be a decent option as well, because uh, specific this is specifically to molten strike of the zenith because molten strike of the zenith gains a lot of damage through quality. So 10% more quality would be will be 100% more damage on the on the on the zenith rock. So it's not a bad choice at all as well. Anyway, uh, if you if you like this type of video, uh, please uh, leave a comment and thank you very much if you watched to this point and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.